Whenever people talk about the old school 49ers unit, they always mention guys like Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Ronnie Lott, and occasionally Deion Sanders when he played for the team, but seem to forget one of the most talented dual threat backs of all time in Roger Craig. Craig and Craig is going to score in third touchdown of the day. After a solid career at Nebraska, Roger was a decent prospect, and because of that was the fourth running back selected behind Eric Dickerson and some other solid dudes. Anyways, even though he was one of the first running backs selected, there wasn't crazy expectations for his play in San Francisco, especially with the 49ers coming off a 3-6 record in a strike-shortened season. Anyways, Roger didn't waste any time from the get-go, with over 700 rushing yards and 400 receiving as the 49ers made it all the way to the conference championship following a solid 10-6 season. Against Washington, the 49ers lost in a shootout 24-21, but were definitely not done as it was only the beginning. Going into his sophomore season, Roger was looking to lean into his dual threat abilities and had over 600 yards both rushing and receiving as the 49ers were nearly unstoppable. After a ridiculous 15-1 regular season, the expectations were super high for a team that was just firing in all cylinders, and somehow the 49ers exceeded them after rolling through the Giants, Bears, and then Dolphins as Roger got his first Super Bowl in only year two. Now that the 49ers proved that they were the team to beat, there was a ton of pressure on them to replicate their success the following season, but it was just not in the stars. Although a 10-6 season is far from bad, it was an indicator that the team regressed a bit, but not Roger. That year Roger made history as he not only rushed for over a thousand yards, but also had over a thousand receiving yards for the first time in NFL history. Since then only Marshall Falk and Christian McCaffrey have done the same, but in an offense with Joe Montana and Jerry Rice, it's pretty unbelievable. Anyways, that year the 49ers lost in the wild card to a dominant Giants team pretty handedly 17-13. Not only was it a disappointing way to go out, but it was one of the main reasons that Roger's year is rarely talked about with the best of the best. But we all know what went down. I really wish I didn't see that, you know, try to erase my memory. Alright, it's gone now. After such a rough end to their 1985 season, the 49ers were looking to dominate in 86, but once again only had 10 wins and lost the Giants in the wildcard 49-3. Although the 49ers struggled in 86, Roger was able to produce once again with over 800 yards rushing and 600 receiving as he continued his one-of-a-kind production. Following two years of pure disappointment, a 13-2 regular season looked promising until the loss of the Vikings in the divisional once again threw the 49ers out early. Yet again Roger continued his production with this time over 800 rushing and nearly 500 receiving to just further show that he works all over the offense. Nonetheless, all of Frisco was in disarray after three straight first round exits, two of which were by the same team and were blowouts. Dang! That's tough. So going into 88, there was a lot of determination to prove why the 49ers were contenders in the first place. And although they went 10-6 yet again, this time they meant business. After cruising through Minnesota, the Bears stood no chance as the Bay was back in the Super Bowl. Many remember this game because of the infamous drive by Montana to take out a Bengals team that is still chasing a Lombardi. Not only did they just win the game, but the 49ers proved that they were legit, and Rodgers over 1,500 yards rushing and 500 receiving showed that he shouldn't be ignored. Now that the 49ers had made their trip back to the top, there was quite a bit of questions going into 89 about whether or not they could replicate the success they had the previous year. A 14-2 record silenced the doubters pretty quickly, and after defeating Minnesota and steamrolling the Rams, they were back in the big game once again. Although Elway was a few years off of an MVP, he wasn't ready for San Francisco as the 49ers were once again on top of the football world. Not only were the 49ers killing it, but Rodgers over 1,000 yards rushing and nearly 500 through the air proved that he was still able to produce. Keep in mind that Roger had 7 straight seasons with over 1,100 all-purpose yards, which is pretty insane considering just how dominant Jerry Rice was with Montana and how many yards they were able to get through the air. Anyways, the 49ers were at the top of their game going into the 90s and continued their success with the dominant 14-2 regular season. Following the solid year, the 49ers were once again looking towards the Super Bowl, but lost the eventual Super Bowl champ Giants yet again. Although another great year for Frisco, it was the end of Rodgers' time in the Bay, as he missed 5 games after only missing 2 the previous 7 years. With the 49ers, Roger was on his A game with over 7,000 rushing yards and 50 touchdowns on the ground, along with over 4,400 receiving yards and 16 through the air, as he helped the team win 3 Super Bowls in only 8 years. 
Although he put up solid stats outside of his injury riddled 90 season, it seemed like the 49ers had a short leash on Roger as he left the Bay for LA. The Raiders were an interesting choice as he was joining a committee including a legend of Marcus Allen and a solid back in Nick Bell. Anyways, Rodgers was motivated to do his thing, and although he wasn't able to do much through the air, nearly 600 rushing yards was far from bad for someone who likely had a great deal of wear and tear after nearly a decade of dominance. But although Rodgers didn't do much in 91, LA went 9-7 but ended up losing to the Chiefs in the first round. Nonetheless, after 91, Roger was done in LA and decided to leave California for the first time in a decade as he went back to his Midwest roots in Minnesota. After Herschel Walker left for Philly, Terry Allen was left to take control of the offense as Roger played second fiddle with just over 400 rushing yards and 100 through the air as Minnesota went 11-5 and, and then ended up getting smacked by Washington in the first round. Anyways, after a pretty underwhelming season for Roger, it was looking like the end of his road in Minnesota after 93, and his just over 100 yards rushing and receiving was seemingly useless on a 9-7 Vikings unit that lost to the Giants in the first round. That season, Roger was only the fourth leading rusher on his own team, and sadly his time in the NFL had come to an abrupt end. After signing a one-day contract to end his career of 49er, Roger closed the page on one of the most underrated careers in NFL history. His over 8,000 rushing yards and nearly 5,000 receiving proved that he was one of the most prolific dual threat backs of all time. Not only that, but Roger went to four Pro Bowls, was the AP Offense Player of the Year in 88, and won three Super Bowls. Funny enough, Roger made the playoffs every single year that he played, and upon that is one of the best running backs in postseason history. Although a pretty credible resume, Roger is still yet to be in canon, and I for one think it is a travesty for someone who did the dirty work for one of the best dynasties in NFL history. But I mean, I guess anything is possible, and now all we can do is hope. Roger Craig was one of the most dominant dual threat backs in NFL history, and so I think it's time he gets the attention he deserves. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, it would be awesome if you guys could subscribe, like, and comment down below what videos you guys want next. But anyway, see you guys soon and peace out.